Hey, how's it going guys? Yes, we're doing this once again. It's Christmas, and we do this every few times a year. We check out PC VR on the Oculus Quest 2 without any PC whatsoever. However, we're going to do a few things a little bit differently this time, including actually not using a PC whatsoever, considering that was something that was uh, a problem a few times back. Instead, we're going to be using a phone. With the influx of new Quest players joining the community over Christmas, I'm sure a lot of you will not have a VR-ready PC to play around with to check out these games. So today I'm going to be showing you something that will hopefully make your time on the Quest a lot, lot nicer. So, as usual, in case you guys like this video, make sure to smack that subscribe button down below, and let's get right into it. So, a few months back, we checked out a service called Plutosphere. In fact, I think we tested it out twice, including on mobile data. However, Plutosphere has come a long way. And in fact, they've been doing these incredible giveaways from time to time on their Discord server, where they genuinely just give you out a VR-ready cloud PC to try out. These guys are absolutely incredible. Even though their service is still in beta, and this is like some sort of beta testing, you know, it's good for them to get feedback, but it's also incredible for you to be able to try out PC VR games without a VR-ready PC. Today we're going to be testing out two ways of doing this. We're going to be playing with Virtual Desktop, and we're also going to be playing with the Plutosphere app. Yes, these guys actually have a dedicated app that you can sideload using SideQuest, and last time we tested that out, to be completely honest with you, it did not work very well. There were a lot of bugs and things that just stopped me from using it altogether. However, this time, hopefully, that won't be the case. So, what are we waiting for? Let me show you exactly how you can use your Plutosphere PC once you get access to it. Either once you buy it, when they go out of base, or if you manage to win it in a giveaway. By the way, this also works for any other cloud VR gaming service that we have tried out throughout the years, including Shadow PC, but unfortunately they had to raise their prices, so your options are sort of limited. So, once you get access to your Plutosphere PC, you access the website that they give you and start your Plutosphere PC. Once you've done that, what you want to do is go on to Desktop Vision, which is the website that will allow you to actually access your PC, and then in the top right you click Login, and you log in to your desktop vision account, click on your PC and your phone will straight up connect you to your Plutosphere PC, giving you access to your desktop. Now, I personally really don't like using desktop vision on a phone. It's just not really nice. So what I recommend you do once you do get access to desktop vision is get yourself any desk. Any desk isn't great if you want to be using it for flat screen gaming. However, if you want to use it just to access your PC and just set things up, download a few games and stuff like that, I find it much better than desktop vision. And there we go. I now have any desk access and this should just make it a lot more comfortable for me to access access my PC. That's just a little tip for you guys right there. Of course, you know, everyone has their favorite remote control applications, but now that we've got that done, let's hop into virtual desktop and try that out first. So here we are. Uh, the first thing I tried was hopping into virtual desktop and launching Half-Life Alex. The first time we actually did PC VR with no PC, it's actually my best performing video on the channel, but I launched Beat Saber. I'm not entirely certain what was going through my head, but sure, that's a quest game. Sure, it requires low latency, but I should have tried something else. So we tried out Half-Life Alex with Virtual Desktop, and that worked surprisingly well. A few stutters here and there, but other than that, it worked fantastically. I'm playing Half-Life Alex. This is perfectly playable without a PC at all. That is incredible. You know what? I feel like uh, there's one thing that needs to be done here. Look at that! Merry Christmas, guys! <laughs> this is amazing. Now, do keep in mind we're running a T4 in here, so it's not like the most powerful GPU in the world, but it's still really good. And now we can launch a different game. Let's launch some Beat Saber, because this is a game that requires really good latency in order for you to be able to play it, as you probably know if you play Beat Saber. I would love to try this just casually on Plutosphere. After that, we launched the Plutosphere client. Yes, they do have their own client, as I mentioned earlier, and I really wanted to see how far it's progressed. Okay, so this is us inside the Plutosphere client. First thing I noticed, the controller models are still from the Quest 1, but I'm pretty sure it was running at 120 hertz. I mean, it felt super smooth. So that's something for you right there. Not virtual desktop this time. If I fire this up here, you can see it says Plutosphere client, even though for some reason it has the virtual desktop background. But straight away, I can actually tell you this feels 
a lot smoother for whatever reason. It had a lot less latency and actually allowed me to play Beat Saber on Expert Plus. Whoa! Oh, it's been a while since I've done anything on Expert Plus. I did it. Okay, okay, I don't want to be sweating too much. Props to the Plutosphere team, that is amazing. You managed to make the latency a lot less than virtual desktop. Negative is, I can't actually check what the latency is. In virtual desktop, I can have an overlay. Not that that matters, because I know I can play it. But if I turn on Half-Life Alex now... Now, I feel it's important to mention that from here on out, I turned on Quest recording so that I could have access to the microphone from the Quest, but it also added these weird black bars to the recording. So if you see black bars from time to time on the recording, this isn't actually happening inside the headset. It just happened while I was recording. So keep that in mind. Same with any audio delays or any audio hitches. That's just the Quest doing its thing. We're going to find out if there's any of that stuttering that was there earlier. There's still a little bit of jitteriness on the controllers as you can see that was there in virtual desktop as well so not entirely sure what's happening there but a totally totally playable experience oh oh whoa 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 that went far Ooh. oh okay virtual desktop did better there yeah no very very playable way less of that stuttering but when it does happen, it's a lot more intense. It's what I've noticed. So there's a lot less of it, but when it does happen, there's more of it. Okay, next game. Okay, here we are. Okay. Uh, let's just go to the canyon and let's start a sandbox. And we're going to start. So straight away, I can tell you, Good experience so far. Hello. Whoa, sir. No, rude. Don't do that. Whoa. Hola. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> Goodbye. Sir. Are you okay? A lot more setting in virtual desktop to play around with. So I feel like certain things are just a lot, lot smoother. Um, the fact that I can change bit rates, the fact that I can change potato quality and stuff like that. It's just, I feel like it's a lot more that I can change and kind of make better. Plus the controllers are actually Quest 2 controllers. Hello. Who's coming? Do I have any friends? Friends? Oh, friends! Oh, hello, friend! You, beautiful. You are immune to my punches? Taking your friend. He is now hostage. Your friend, come with me now. Happened to you as well. I do apologize. I don't know how to control this. So now we're firing up the forest, which is actually one of my favorite games to play inside VR. Uh, th this game, I think, still has VR in beta, but it just it works really well and it's hilarious. And uh, it's a game that you can't run on the quest itself. So it's going to be really cool to see how well this runs on um, on a Plutosphere PC. Okay. So as you can see, oh, I need to turn off movement darkening. It's so painful. So as you can see, this game is quite beautiful, graphics wise. The fidelity on these graphics is honestly really nice, which is, I guess, why the quest can't run this. I mean, just look at it. That is incredible. As you can see here, it's running at no problem whatsoever. Yes, the bitrate is dying a little bit, but again, that is to be uh, understood. That is amazing. You could play the forest perfectly fine on uh, on a PC. That is that is really good. That is so cool. 
So that was actually quite incredible. I mean, this kind of gaming has come so far since the very beginning. And with graphics cards being such a pain to buy nowadays, I feel like it's going to be a pain to get a VR ready PC for quite some time. Services like this coming out are really good for everyone. I mean, some people absolutely hate the idea of cloud gaming. I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, if you don't like it, just get a PC. But this is going to be a lifesaver for so many of those that don't mind it. And that's why I love going back to this and checking it out and seeing how much it's progressed. There were a few issues with this test. It wasn't as perfect as I'd like it to be. First of all, it's amazing to see that I can play casual PC VR games with decent latency. Like I can play them, no problem. I would not mind this. If you watched one of my previous videos, we actually had servers in Dublin and the latency was minimal. Like it was incredibly minimal. Today, it wasn't necessarily minimal, but still incredibly playable. If you get a Plutosphere PC, you will be getting servers closest to you. I am an exception because videos. However, where it gets interesting is Plutosphere versus virtual desktop. As I mentioned earlier, Plutosphere have their own client and today we tried out both. And what's interesting is there didn't seem to be one for everything. Plutosphere was better at some stuff, while Virtual Desktop was better at others. Virtual Desktop had a bit more stuttering here and there, while Plutosphere didn't. But when it had those stutters, they were larger and lasted for a bit longer. But when they weren't there, it was smoother and it had less latency. Also, the bitrate was much higher. However, I feel like the settings that I can control in Virtual Desktop, change them, set them to what I think is going to work the best, gave Virtual Desktop that little bit of an advantage, allowing me to play Blade and Sorcery a lot smoother smoother than I could with the Plutosphere client. But with something like Beat Saber, where latency is incredibly important, it seemed that the Plutosphere client performed much better. This is all incredibly interesting, and seeing this technology progress and grow is fantastic. Check out the Plutosphere Discord down below, and I hope that some of you get to win some of their giveaways in the future and try out PC VR for yourself. PC VR is an incredible experience that you simply just cannot have on the Quest itself. Don't get me wrong, the Quest is still incredible, but of course you will be missing out on some graphics and some fidelity. I mean, it's obvious. If you have a decent internet connection, this will be perfect for you. Just get a server closest to you and you'll be all set to go. Again, this is fantastic and thank you so much to Plutosphere for helping out the community and for giving me access to one of these servers to check it out for myself. I will definitely be using their services in the future and it's just overall incredibly amazing what you guys do, bringing PC VR to the masses. Now, we will be trying this again in the future so that we can try it on something like mobile data, for example, but today I think was a very large success. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but leave some constructive criticism down in the comment section below. Thank you so much to the Patreon supporting this channel. You guys helped me out a ton, paying my bills, paying services here and there, and just overall making these videos better. So thank you so much for that. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape or form, we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch this not put a huge ad on your body. As usual, in case you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.